Do you know, I've been trying so hard not to make this video. It's just too important though, and ignoring it could spell the end of photography, not just as a profession, but for hobbyists too. I'm going to try and bring this all round to a hopeful conclusion. But before we get going today, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Now I am of course talking about artificial intelligence or AI and after numerous discussions and debates on Twitter over the last few weeks, it's pretty clear that many people out there are still not aware of the sheer scale and impact that AI could potentially have. So in this video, I'm laying down my thesis, my prediction of what is coming. And if you disagree, well, that's cool because I hope I'm wrong. What we're talking about here is images that would be indistinguishable from those shot by a photographer unless you were told otherwise. Images that required no camera, no effort, no work, and literally no photographic activity at all. What we're talking about is typing a few words into an AI generator where after just a few seconds it spits out the final photo. Maybe you fancy a misty woodland. Here you go. Maybe a nice mountain scene. Or what about an ethereal long exposure? seascape. This is happening right now. They may be fairly low resolution and look a bit weird, but the thing about proper AI is that it's learning and the speed at which they improve is going to be like nothing we've ever seen before. What they're doing at the moment is kind of essentially scouring the internet and building an image based on a combination of elements extracted from, from other images. In this video, Franz sums it up by saying, AI is plagiarizing our past to generate our future. As the technology develops and learns though, AI will begin to create images completely from scratch. And another point Fran makes is that it will be almost impossible for humans to compete because the AI will create content so perfectly optimized to our desires that we will subconsciously prefer to consume that content as opposed to that from a human creator. It all sounds pretty bleak, but an argument I often hear is that AI is just another technology, something for us to use as a tool and benefit from. So is there any truth in that? An excellent book worth reading is The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth. And a central point to the book is the fact that technology is deflationary. This goes back to the agricultural revolution when Jethro Tull invented the seed drill or the industrial revolution where machines powered by coal put the Luddites out of work. The point is, is these new forms of energy and the technology that developed from that made producing goods and services cheaper and increased profits. The process continues to this day as the digital revolution arose off the back of energy produced by oil and AI is just another iteration of this, which will drive down the price and put many more people out of work. Let's use the thumbnail of this video as an example. First and foremost, I just think it's an awesome image. In the past, employing an artist to design this and maybe someone to do the CGI could have potentially cost thousands and taken a lot of time and energy to do. I knew I wanted a kind of apocalyptic scene, so I started off by using an AI myself and typing in camera, mushroom, cloud, apocalypse, I think. And just a few seconds later, it spit out this image here. It's close, but not quite what I wanted. So I employed my friend who works as a digital creative and he went to work using an AI generator called Midjourney, used my brief, came up with the image. And after a bit of his sort of Photoshop wizardry, the thumbnail was born in about an hour for less than a hundred pounds. In this scenario, my friend put the time in to figure out how to make the AI work. 
and I still needed him, but fast forward a few years and that role will also be obsolete. It will be free and easy for me to do it myself and eventually it's not just going to be restricted to still images either. It'll be able to make moving pictures and graphics as well. AI is going to be very bad for some people, but the key to understanding all of this is by thinking about the incentives, which are really just born from human nature. If I can create imagery like this easily and for free, why on earth would I pay an artist to do it for me? So where does that leave us as photographers? Is it really a photography apocalypse? For a while, I've been saying that AI is an attack on landscape photography. Whilst I am sort of saying this to be controversial and spark discussion, I do think there is some truth to it. And uncomfortably, I think it applies to hobbyists as much as it does professionals. In last week's video, I talked about how the price of digital content will always trend to zero. AI accelerates this fact because if someone needs an image of a landscape to use in advertising and marketing, say, they're not going to pay someone like me to create the work commercially if they can just type a few words into the AI. What I'm really talking about here is value. Value it can be a complicated subject. So let's break it down into two categories. Firstly, let's consider photography as a product or service. There are numerous theories of value. Marx came up with the labour theory of value, where the value is derived from the amount of labour required to make a thing. Marx got it wrong though, and a better idea is the energy theory of value, where value is derived from the amount of energy required to make a thing. If you consider a typical landscape shoot, for example, planning the trip, using petrol to drive there, hiking up the mountain, food to sustain us, the use of a camera, there's a fair amount of energy that goes into making a photograph, and this is partly what gives it value. AI then destroys this value by creating a final image immediately for free and with very little energy. In a few years, literally anyone with access to the internet will be able to make stunning landscape images. With this value removed from photography as a product or service, the effect on professionals is obviously huge, but my suspicion is that hobbyists are not immune from this either. Less and less people will be interested in seeing your work. And unless you, unless you are very good, AI will be better than you. So an open question is, will you still enjoy going out and making photographs? Firstly, if there is no industry supporting your hobby, and secondly, if no one cares about what you are producing. I think it's a difficult question, and I definitely don't have the answer to that. There is a second part to the value of art, though, and that comes from the artists themselves, from the story, from the human connection, and this is why I think there's still plenty to be excited about for the future. We'll discuss that in just a second, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a photographer, running your own website is the best possible way for you to share your story with the world. And with Squarespace, it's just so easy to get set up and get going. And unlike social media, you control how your images are presented. You start by using one of their beautiful templates, put some of your images and a bit of your text on there. And before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any coding knowledge either. And it will dynamically adjust to look perfect on all types of screen, including a phone, which is very important. You can start with a simple gallery, but as you grow, you can then upgrade your site to an online store where you can easily start selling prints, books, or anything else that takes your fancy. It also now has a member section if you want to run something like a subscription service. And in the unlikely event that you run into trouble, they have award-winning customer service. I've used Squarespace for years. I've never looked back. So go to squarespace.com or click the link down below to start your free trial today. And if you like what you have created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off 
your first purchase. Even in a world with very sophisticated AI, one thing I think we'll never tire of is telling each other stories. It's what makes life worth living and lies at the heart of who we are as social animals. I've been banging on for years about telling stories, but I think it's going to really become increasingly important for photographers to start building narrative around our work and the process more generally. Andy Day, one of the writers at F-Stoppers, pointed out the other day that the provenance or the origin story of our work will have to take on a whole new level of value and it may be all we have left. It wasn't until I began planning this video and saw the thumbnail that I truly sort of wrapped my head around this, but I think we can break art down into two distinct categories where the value of each will be affected by AI in very different ways. On the one hand, there is amazing imagery. And on the other hand, for want of a better phrase, we have fine art. The intended use of the photograph will be very important. So let's think about amazing imagery first. I would say most things fall into this category, the thumbnail of this video. Any sort of good commercial photography used in something like advertising, fashion photography, product photography, stock photography, and pretty much anything that's used as promotional or marketing material. They are still very important to telling a story, but probably in the next five to 10 years, AI is gonna send the price of obtaining such images crashing down to zero. I don't want to pay for this image if I don't have to, because it's just part of a wider narrative. I'm incentivized to get it as cheaply as possible. And once AI starts creating images without human input, the exponential increase in the supply of amazing images, it's, it's just difficult to comprehend. What I am willing to pay for though, is this, a fine art photograph made by one of my favorite photographers. It has a whole different kind of value. It has social value, it's collectible, it's desirable. It's designed to stand alone as a piece of art in its own right. It's an interpretation of the artist communicating something and it would improve whichever environment you place it in. Then if the reputation and popularity of the photographer increases, it can drive demand up and therefore the price of the work will also go up. If photography only remains digital, its price over time will trend to zero. And that's why I think the only future for photography is to make physical products when we can. To avoid photography apocalypse, what I think we need to do is in some way incentivize people to value the artistic side of photography, where the final image is also the final product. Like I said in last week's video, digital photography is only a service, so to make it into a product, we have to make it physical. I, I first started promoting the idea of printing our work about six years ago now. And that was just because it's fucking cool seeing your work come to life. What I didn't realize then is that it would become so crucial to the future of photography. I know it's not cheap. I know it's not easy, but that is exactly the point. You have to work hard, invest resources and put energy into it. And that is what gives it value. But when you do, it is a beautiful thing. You can start today by going to the Raw Room and taking one of the masterclass courses on there where we print the images uh, that we make during the course. It's all now free to access without paywalls and subscriptions. So hit the link down below or go to Raw Room online and check it out. And that's my thesis. The AI genie is out of the bottle and it is not going back in. I've no idea how long, how long this is gonna take, but it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'm gonna go out and do some landscape photography. Well, at least until no one cares anymore anyway. <laughs>